Okay, here are the um, here are the topics for today. Okay, I've just disabled your guys' ability to move things around on the whiteboard because people are moving things by accident. Um, no, I usually just disable it because people are, uh, you know, with 40 people in here. Stuff happens. Don't worry. Um, okay, so the deal here is that some people have made a few questions about parallelism in the submissions. I owe you this from a long time ago, the placement of helping verbs in comparisons. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have attended large numbers of these things, but um, this is a topic that we've had on the menu a couple of times and haven't really had time to get to it. And then a couple people submitted questions about references of relative pronouns, like the, the, the pronoun which. Um, if we get to this topic, if any of you were here way back in the day when we had the first study hall, um, we did some of this in that very first study hall, but at the same time, um, we, a lot of you probably weren't here, and there's no recording of that one, so. Okay, um, before we get started, though, I have one, um, I have one comment to make about the, um, I have one comment to make about the submissions, which I know we have done many of the submissions. Yeah, you know, we've talked about the submissions before in a couple of the other study halls. But another note is this. Um, another note on submissions besides the ones that we've already talked about. Um, from before, we already know the following two things. We know that submissions shouldn't be personal. You know, you shouldn't submit your personal study plan for the study hall. Like, you shouldn't say, this is my score, and this is my test day, and what should be my personal study plan. Um, that's what the general folder is for in the forum. So, take those questions to the forum, post them in the general folder. And then also from before, we learned that you should try to make submissions so that they are not too general and not too specific. So if you, um, not too general, like some people submitted stuff like, you know, can you teach us geometry? Well, that's way too much material for a single study hall. Um, not too specific, like, like don't just ask about two answer choices of one problem. You know, or at least if you do try to generalize the question. It's it's okay to ask about one particular problem with a couple of answer choices. But if you do that, then what you've got to make sure that you do is you generalize the question. So if you want to say, okay, I don't get it between choice A and choice B here. Okay, so what we don't want to see is too specific would be something like what's the difference between um, A and B on this problem. But a better way to do that would be how do I tell a from B on this problem, and how do I do this sort of thing in general? So that's the difference in the question types that we're looking for. Okay, and then finally, most importantly, some of you guys are still not doing this. Um, you must cite original sources for your problems. Okay, um, this means you have to cite where the problems are from, and this must be original, i.e. no forums. Some of you guys are saying, I got these problems from GMAT Club, or I got them from the Beat the GMAT Forum. 
those are not original sources because those are forums. Um, forum people don't write problems. They, they answer problems that already exist. So those are all second hand. You've really got to cite original sources because we, there are copyright issues that we are constantly treading on one way or the other here. Okay, so this stuff we talked about before. Any questions about this? Smiley face if you guys understand all these things. Smiley faces. Okay, um, good. Now the one new note on submissions is this. Um, this is the Manhattan GMAT study hall. Okay, we all know that. But the point of this study hall is meant to be an addition to our nine session course. Okay, therefore, um, with that in mind, we are not going to do study hall topics with a significant overlap with nine session course topics. Um, this, is, this is significant because um, some people are submitting questions that would otherwise be good questions, but are basic enough and fundamental enough that they are in our nine session course. And so we would rather have you, have you take the nine session course for that sort of information. For instance, um, one, one submission that was submitted today is, you know, can you do an overview of, you know, reading RC passages? Well, that, that, that's not a bad question. I mean, this is, this is a nicely scaled question. I mean, it's a question that, that is decently uh, like a study hall size topic. I mean, this is a good question. But it's already the, the, the main thrust of a couple of our lessons in the actual, in the ninth session course. So the idea being that this is meant to be, a, I mean, the study hall is a courtesy. It's completely free. It's meant for, it's meant for two reasons. The first thing is it's meant to be an add-on to what is already there as far as the nine session course. I know a lot of the students in here have taken our course already. So it's meant to enhance the experience that those students have. But it's also meant to be, you know, an, an attractive freebie for students who have not taken our course. But what we're not what we don't really want to do is to give away the entire course through the study hall. So for questions that are this basic um, or questions that are this central or fundamental um, the nine session course. That's why it's there. So, um, I mean, I can tell you guys that kind of stuff, you know, and then we'll, we'll go from there. I, I want to mention a couple of things. There's one problem that someone submitted which is already in one of the previous study halls. Um, one student, so if you're here, I don't remember who submitted it, but one student submitted especially versus specially um, as a problem. This is that we actually covered this in the uh, November 12th study hall. So if you are here, if the student who wrote that question is in the audience right now, then we covered this topic in the study hall for November 12th. So you can go back and watch the recording of that study hall and it should be there. Okay, um, so just one more redux. This is the rules. Um, about eight or nine minutes of just, this is, this is the submissions. This stuff you knew before, but it's always worth reminding you of because some people are still submitting questions in violation of these guidelines. And also um, this, you know, we're going to try to select topics in favor of things that are additions to or outside the standard nine session course curriculum. Smiley face, if that makes any sense. And if you have any questions about that, we uh, go ahead and type in the text box. Okay, so 
With that said, let's go ahead and look at some of the examples of parallelism. We, we did have a little bit of a unit on parallelism before. So the first couple of slides are going to recap a little bit something that is in one of our previous study halls. But it's from a few months ago. And then we're going to build on more topics regarding parallelism as we go. So here's what we're going to do. Here's a slide. This is a drill where we're going to cover up all of these except for one. We're going to reveal them one at a time. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a polling window. All right, there are buttons on the top of the screen. All right, buttons at top left of the screen of your window. There should be a green check and a red X. Give me a smiley face if you guys see those buttons at the top left of your window. Okay, and give me the other face if you don't see them. Okay, so for each one of these, um, okay, a couple of non-smiley faces, they are at the very, very top left of your Illuminate window. Not, not this whiteboard window, but the entire window that the whole thing is in. So like way up there above the roster. Okay, so here's the deal. For each one of these, I want you to give me the green check if you think it is parallel and a red X if you think it is not parallel. So the first sentence is, this animal lives in grass and trees. By the way, you cannot see each other's responses, so don't be shy. We're going to give you all the answers. Um, a little bit later. Okay, if you don't have an answer to this, a green check or a red X, go ahead and guess. Remember the GMAT is something where you do have to answer everything. Okay, um, the results of that one are right here. Um, mostly in favor of green check. Let's make that kind of small. All right, here's the next one. I'm going to clear out your responses. Give me a green check if you think that's correct, and give me a red X if you think that's not correct. I'll give you a little few more seconds to make that decision. Okay, um, here are the results of this one. Um, a little bit, um, kind of the same percentages. So you guys are mostly, again, thinking that this is parallel. All right, clear your responses. What about that one? Okay, I'll give you a few more seconds to do that. All right, um, here's the polling results. Again, notice I'm not really telling you whether you guys are correct or not yet. We're going to do that at the end. So here are the statistics. Again, pretty consistent responses. Okay, that's what you guys said this time. Next one, here your answers are clear. Go ahead. Okay, um, go ahead and take another couple seconds to do that if you guys need to. Here are the polling results. This one is significantly different. 
So here's your here's your statistics. Uh, let's resize that. Let me get that fit here. All right. Notice that you guys mostly said wrong. All right, go ahead and respond to that one. Your responses have been cleared. Take another couple seconds to respond to that if it's necessary. Okay. Um, here are your polling responses to that one, and then we'll do one more. Here are your responses. Um, wait, well, that didn't work. Okay. Here they are. So you guys didn't like that one much either. And then let's do one more, which is the very last one. That's that one. Clear out your answers. Go to town. Okay, um, almost done here. Let's give you like one more, two more seconds if you need it. And um, okay, here are your statistics results. This one overwhelmingly you guys liked. Okay, so the good news is that the the crowd here was absolutely correct about all of these. If you take the majority responses, you guys got them all right. So um, let's do the quick run down. Again, everything agrees with what you guys put. So these first two are actually both correct. Um, the animal lives in grass and trees, the animal lives in grass and in trees, both correct. We'll discuss these in a second. And then this is correct. This one is also correct, the very last one. And then the other two are incorrect. Let's discuss why really quickly. Um, this is a little bit of a review if you've been to our previous study halls, so it won't take a horribly long time. But review, remember that parallelism is marked by signals, which are usually words, but sometimes punctuation, such as commas. Okay, and then the, the words that follow these signals must be included in parallel structures. So let's look at these four first. Um, in the text box, go ahead and type, what are the signals in these four sentences, which there are no, there's no punctuation, but which words are signals in those? Okay, yeah, so you guys are starting to type it both and. Okay, so the signals are, are not just and, very important, super important. So in this case, it's both and and, those are the signals. So uh, in grass and in trees are not signals. Signals are the words that are boundaries of the parallel structures, not the actual parallel structures themselves. So, um, Again, smiley faces, in particular, if you were one of the ones who wrote grass and trees, but let me see smiley faces if you, if you understand what we mean by signals here. They're the words that mark off the parallel structure. They're not the actual parallel structures themselves. So in particular, I'm looking for smiley faces from people who um, got this incorrect. Okay, um, smiley if you understand that both and and are the, are the parallel markers. Okay, so you go good. So when you do these four, all you really have to do is just look at what follows the parallel signal. What kind of construction? What kind of constructions follows each signal? 
So in this case, we're looking at on in graphs and in trees. Those are correct. That's why it's good. This is just graphs, a noun, but this is in trees, which is not okay. Prepositional phrase. So those are not the same type of structure. Um, in graphs, trees, not parallel. Grass, trees, parallel. Okay, now let's revisit these because you guys didn't do quite as well at these ones. But let's take a look. Um, the signal here is just and, not both. We don't have a both this time. So notice that the left-hand part here is not marked by a signal. So whereas the right part is, so the right part is the one that's going to determine all of this here. Like this is definitely trees. So as long as we find something over there that is parallel to this, then we're good. You, you can't decide that this is in grass because that's a random decision. So uh, there's no justification for that. But this is trees. So what over here is parallel to trees? It's text box. What word over here is the structure that's parallel with this? Yeah, just grass. So what we do is we just pick that out of there. Because there's no signal, so we can pick out whatever we want as long as it works. So here is this and this. All right, notice that here, this is in trees. We just go pick out in grass. Again, there's no signal telling us where to start, so we just can pick whatever is going to work. Um, one more problem that's going to be correct. Just to show you how this works, I mean, the left-hand structure is just sort of arbitrary. But if I say something like this animal lives in grass and forages in trees, or this animal lives in grass and forages in trees, same thing, it still works. Because here's your signal, and it marks off forages in trees. So in this case, which one is the parallel structure over here? Text box, please. Yep, lives in, this time it's the whole thing, right? Lives in grass, not, not the entire thing, but verb in, in noun, activity in place. So this is the parallel structure. So, I mean, what's interesting here is that you may have to process parallelism from left to right to figure it out. Like, if there is no signal on the front, such as just an, or, or, then you need to figure out the parallelism from right to left. Very strange, but the right-hand one is the one that's marked. The left-hand one is not. So you can't pick a, a random structure out of the left. You have to go from right and then find what goes over here. Um, any questions about this? Smiley face and be ready to see a problem. Okay, good. Let's show you a problem. Here's the problem. I'm going to give you, again, please use the buttons that are on your screen. This time there are A through E buttons on the top. Do not type your answer on the text box. You know, same place you saw the green check and red, and red X. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a timer. Again, you guys can't see each other's responses, so no reason to be shy. I'm going to give you about a minute 45 to this problem. I'm going to give you about a minute 15. This problem's not that long. So, there you go. Go for it.
We need some answers, please. Remember, it's the GMAT. On the GMAT, there's no such thing as abstaining from a problem. So please give me some kind of answer. Okay. So we have a few different answers being chosen here. In fact, some of you are choosing at least at least one of you has chosen everything. So here are the statistics. We're kind of all over the place. Um, one person didn't answer the problem. The other person listed as none is me because I don't, I don't answer the problems myself. So here are the statistics. Clear majority in favor of A. It's not, not a majority, it's a plurality, but we have a, the crowd favorite is A. Um, what are the signals in this sentence? Go ahead and tell me in the text box, please. Not just or. A couple of you are just saying or. Um, and um, some people who are saying just or are getting this incorrect. The signals are either and or. So let's block those off and let's see what we're looking at as far as parallel structures goes. And remember when you look at this type of parallel structures that this is two signals. So these are going to be like the last four sentences on our last slide where you basically just have to look at what follows them and see what, what it is. So for instance, when you had both and and, after both, if it was in grass after both and in trees after and, you were good to go as far as parallel structure. But if it was just grass against in trees, then that's not okay. Those are different types of structures. So, Let's take a look. After the either here, we have electronic books. After the or, we have downloadable copies. You've got to go back up to the question stem and read that part. Are those parallel? Yes or no? Go ahead and just type yes or no in the text box, please. Those are definitely parallel. Electronic books, downloadable copies, both nouns with adjectives tagged onto them. This is as electronic books, but then that's just downloadable copies. That's a problem. Um, if this is as electronic books inside this parallel structure, then you're going to have to have an as over here too, and you don't. So that's incorrect. This is electronic books and as downloadable copies. Again, you can't ignore this as here. This is an automatic inclusion because it's followed, it follows a signal. So these aren't parallel either. The structures in D are the same as they are in C. This is just electronic books, but this is, again, as downloadable copies. So that doesn't fly. So as one poster has written, yes, only A and E have correctly parallel structures. So in this case, um, the difference between A and E is pretty subtle. So if you picked E, um, I can see why you would. But A is a little bit better as far as the modifier. The problem is with and is it's sort of an improper connector. Like if you connect two sentences with or the clauses with and, then normally you are implying that unless other transition words are present, that there is that, that that these two ideas are independent of each other. 
for instance, if you say something like, there was a great deal of traffic today, and I was late to work, then in the text box, why was I late to work? Wait for a couple of responses. I'm late to work because I'm late. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, that, sure, that's I suppose it's always true. Um, it's actually not because there's traffic. That was the response I was hoping to draw from some of you guys here. Yeah, no, if you say and, and as we just said, it implies a relative independence of these two statements. So we don't know why I was late to work, but we definitely know that the reason the traffic is not responsible for my being late. These are presented as two independent events. So give me a smiley face if this makes sense. The way we use and. If we just use and without any sort of other connectors here. Um, the reason why this is tough, ironically, this is probably harder for people who are native speakers of English. Because when people talk, they just say and a lot of the time. People, people overuse and um, all the time. Question, does it matter because a comma? Not really. The, the idea is still the same. It's two separate things. So, um, spoken language crap. Okay, if I said something like this, though, if I said there was a great deal of traffic today and, and thus I was late to work, notice now I have this transition word thus, which claims a relationship between these two events. So now the traffic may be late. So, but and by itself doesn't. And there's, there's another official problem. There are several official problems that have this sort of fallacy. So if you've got, um, you also got this sort of thing where there was one problem. I think it was number, I want to say it was number it's in a first edition verbal review. I want to say it was problem 55. So you can go take a look at that. I can't post the whole question here for copyright reasons. But if you want to reference first edition verbal review, number 55, you've got a wrong answer choice. Contains. Um, contains this sort of misuse and. So you can go take a look at that problem if you like. Okay, but the main point of today, without getting too far distracted, too far gone on this on this side thread here, the main point of today is that um, the, the parallel is that you know how to use the parallel structure. So all right, you guys ready to move on to some new topics of parallelism? Smiley face if you are. Again, type uh, questions in the text box if you've got them. OK. Um, I see one face that said no. Um, that's one face. Unfortunately, one face out of about 35 or 40. So I mean, if you have questions, you can type those questions in the text box, and I'll try to answer them in line. Um, but yeah, works to be, that's a good question, let's address that real quick. Works to be sold. This is an idiomatic sort of construction when you're using infinitive in this sort of way. Um, noun plus no comma plus to be verbed. This implies that this is going to happen to the noun. So if you have desserts to be eaten at tonight's meal, then those are desserts which are definitely going to be eaten at tonight's meal. So same sort of thing here. These are works to be sold online. Those are works that are definitely, the, the selling online is definitely going to happen to those works. Those works are going to be sold online. 
So that's this kind of construction that you can also memorize if you like. That's a good question. Thank you. Smiling face if you guys understand that. And we'll move on to something new. Smiling face if that makes sense. Um, and other face if it doesn't. And we'll, we'll take a look at the, at the sum total of smileys versus others. Again, if you guys have questions, go ahead and try to type them into the text box so that I can answer them in line. Because um, if we've got like 20 smileys versus two non-smileys, then, then we can't really pause the study hall. So go ahead and ask your questions in the text box. Okay. Um, let's, I see a couple of people typing. I'm not sure if you're typing about this problem. So I'll wait a few seconds to see. And then we'll move on to something new. Um, for both and sentence construction, are they both grammatically correct? Um, yeah, I mean, Spanish, sure. I, I mean, I know some Spanish. I know a little bit of Catalan. I mean, I know how these things work in other languages. I mean, if we had 30 people here who spoke Catalan, I could give you guys some nice examples. but. Yeah, if, I mean, if you do speak a uh, different language, though, you might want to try to relate it to your own language. Um, Joe, I'm not sure what you meant by that. So, by I mean, are they? By, are, I'm not sure what you're asking is what grammatically correct. So, if you want to retype that question, go ahead. Let, let, let's move on, and I'll try to address that as we go. So, okay, here are some new things. Tell whether, again, I'm going to give you the, um, the, the red X and the green check. So, again, please don't answer these in the box or on the screen because everybody will see that. But red X equals no. Green check equals yes. Okay, tell us that one is properly parallel or not. Okay, we still only have answers from about half of you. So you can take a little bit longer here and that's all right. But let's try to get an answer to this. If you're not sure, then go ahead and guess. Okay, so most of you appeared to like that one. Here are your statistics. Let's do another one. All right. Um, how about that? I'll go ahead and clear out your answers. Um, guys who are typing by X and by Y, um, it goes either way. It, it's sort of like the first two examples on the uh, on the animal sentences. You can say this animal lives in grass and trees or in grass and in trees. So that's not a factor unless you have the word both in there. Um. Okay, everybody give me something. Try to in the next like 15 or 20 seconds here. For some reason, the people in the last half of the alphabet seem to be answering these things a lot faster. It's interesting. Okay, uh, mostly people whose names are starting with letters like A and C and D that don't have answers yet. So three, two, one. All right, here are your answers. Again, um, four people not answering. You guys have got to answer these in some way or another. Remember, that's how the test works. It's not an option not to. Okay, now try that one. Green check if you think it's correct. 
red X if you think it is not correct. This is where it starts to get interesting. Okay, here are your answers. Pretty even on this one. Now what about that one? Green check if you like that. Red X if you don't. Let's take a few more seconds for that if you guys need it. Okay. It's five, four, three, two, one, boom. There's your statistics. So again, the crowd is actually right about all four of these again. Although, as I as I fully expected, these two here were were relatively uncontroversial, and these two here people had a little bit of a harder time with. So I'll give away the answers here, and then we'll have a little discussion of this. All right, this one is parallel. This one is not parallel. This one down here is parallel. And then the one, the third one is actually not parallel. So what, what's interesting here is that, um, right, so where Ben's comment is starting to anticipate where we're going with this. Um, before we get into this, let's, we're going to leave this slide alone for just a second. And no, Ben, that's, that's fine, and we're segueing into that discussion anyway, so it, it's, it's a, actually a pretty nice transition. Let's go to probably one of the most basic non-parallel sentences. Here's a really basic non-parallel sentence. Right, I like reading and to lift weights. Okay, um, you guys probably all know that this is non-parallel because, okay, I mean, this is reading, here's your signal, and then this is to lift. I mean, this is a very silly sounding sentence, right? So, not parallel, right? But, here's a really stupid sounding question that when you step back and think about it is not actually such a stupid question. The question is, why do we want these things to be parallel in the first place? Like, why should these words be parallel in the first place? See if anybody can answer that in the text box. Because some people tend to approach this from a way overly mechanical viewpoint here. Like a lot of people just think that any words that are sitting there in the sentence should just be made parallel. Okay, um, what it is, yeah, it's what Johnny, it's what John and Tammy are starting to say. Um, some of you guys are just giving me mechanical reasons. The mechanical reasons don't answer this question. I mean, the, the mechanical things, when you're talking about this prepositions and, and stuff like that, um, 
conjunctions, verbs, ings, whatever. Like that tells me how to make them parallel once I know I'm supposed to. But how do I know that? I mean, one reason, I mean, true enough, one reason is you see the signal word and. But the problem is and doesn't tell you that, that that's the left-hand side. So it's because the reason, the big reason they should be parallel in the first place is because the ideas are parallel. But can you sure you guys know this? Like parallel structure is not just some random piece of grammar that you guys have to memorize. Okay, it's not an idiom and it's not anything especially unique to the English language. Okay, like the point is that we are talking about two ideas that are in exactly the same context. This is one thing I like to do and this is another thing I like to do. That's why we want these to be parallel in the first place. And this is, uh, this is underappreciated by a lot of students. Um, this is the reason why these two elements should be parallel. In other words, the big, big takeaway for you guys here is this. Okay, parallelism is not random. Okay, you, you, you can't just pick random words out of the sentence and make them parallel. You shouldn't make structures, or at least you only want structures to be parallel if the ideas represented by those words are parallel. So this is super, super, super important. All right, does this make sense? Smiley face if you guys understand what we're saying here. Because, I mean, in this sentence, it's really not that hard because there are only two ideas in the sentence. Um, but when we go back to the sentence that we were on, which is this one, now this makes all the difference in the world. Because, okay, here's a signal. All right, what, what's, what's the signal in in this sentence. Someone's asking when the meaning overrides the mechanical parallelism. That, that, that's, not, uh, that's not what's happening here. It's not that one of them is overriding. It's, it's that you have to use meaning to figure out which words are supposed to be parallel in the first place. It's not an override. It's almost like switching it on and off. Like if you have two words that are not related, then you don't care if they're parallel. So in, in all of these, the signal is exactly the same. What's the signal? Go ahead and type in a text box. The signal is by is not a signal. Um, that, that's not something that that signifies parallelism. Um, by is just saying this is how the student does this, but that's not a signal. The signal is just and. So what we know is. Remember, we know the right-hand parallel structure. I, I mean, by the way, guys, when you guys ask things like, do we need to understand the context, the answer is pretty much always, yes, you need to understand the context. I mean, you, you guys, language is this living thing. It's not just a machine. Like, you, you, guys, you guys definitely have to go into this realizing that context is going to play a role. I mean, we do have people who are, mostly people who are engineers, and because they are engineers, it's understandable that they have this mentality. But the mentality is basically, I'm going to try to just completely treat everything in the language as mechanical. And, and you can't really do that. I mean, a lot of it, you have to use, you have to use meaning to make these decisions. So notice, the right-hand structure is automatically included. So writing hints, I mean, these things that follow and, 
these are included because they follow a signal word, because they follow an. So something must be parallel to this. Give me a smiley face if you guys understand that. Because this follows a signal, something somewhere must be parallel to it. Because it's 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 behind an and. That that's the power of the signal words is that you they, they point out things. But the question is you don't know which one unless you ask. All right, this is a method of cheating. So where is another method of cheating? So what in this sentence is another method of cheating? Text box. Copying other students' answers. So that's the only idea that is parallel to this one is copying other students' answers. So that's how you process it. Okay, this word over here, cheats, um, we don't really care about this word. We don't care if it's parallel or not. Like, th this idea is not parallel to any other idea. Um, Tammy, if you're having trouble following, I'm trying to uh, point and illustrate and type that stuff. So. And if typing is appearing somewhere, then that's the one that we're talking about. Or if you see lines or arrows or hands pointing at stuff. Um, okay. So the right-hand one's automatically included because remember the rule for that is the words that follow the signals, whether you like it or not, um, they must be included. So there. All right. But then we got to look at it. So in this case, this is correctly parallel. Here, same issue, right? We're still asking ourselves, like, this is a method of cheating. Where is there another method of cheating? So if you ask that, that's, that's this again. But that's a problem because these are not parallel. Copying, right. So those don't have the same format, no matter what. Notice that cheats is written in a parallel structure, but we don't care because it it's not the right word, right? I mean, this word is fake parallel. Um, it's actually irrelevant since the idea is not parallel to anything. So, yeah, I mean, cheats on exams, th this is a large-scale action. These are two small-scale actions that are a type of this. So this is a way of doing that. Parallel ideas are things that are like the same magnitude, same priority, same category, same type of thing. So if, um, if you cheat on exams by doing this, those shouldn't be parallel because they're, the priorities are different. Um, the, someone, one of the posters wrote, what if it was copies? I mean, if this was copies and write, those would be parallel, although then this kind of grammar over here would be, would be obnoxious. Like, you'd have to correct this. Because you couldn't say by copies. But if you were just looking at the parallelism and it said copies and write, then yeah, it would work just fine. Okay. Um, Mind you, the, the, the ideas in the second question are exactly the same as the ideas in the first question. Um, they're, both, they're both sentences in which these are the ideas that are parallel. Okay. Um, does everybody see at least what's going on here? 
Um, I, I, um, one, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I think it's Chitrangada. Still the wrong kind of question to ask. You, you're still trying to ask purely mechanical questions. And what I'm telling you is pure mechanics is not going to cut it here. It is impossible to figure these out with pure mechanics. Because you have to figure out what ideas are parallel to what other ideas. It is absolutely impossible to use mechanics here only. Because one thing you guys will notice, I mean, the mechanics of number one is exactly the same as the mechanics of number three. They're, they're identical. So the grammar of these two sentences, one and three, is exactly the same. But one of them is right and one of them is wrong because of meaning. The grammar of two and four are exactly the same, but one but one of them's right and one of them's wrong again. So yeah, the, I mean that's why you guys read the prompt in the first place because the prompt lets you figure out what the sentence means. But I mean we do have people, and again, I mean it, it's the engineering way of approaching stuff, so it makes sense that people would approach the problems in this way. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. I mean, you, you can't just approach all of these as mechanical structures because they have meaning that they're trying to convey. So, okay. Um, next one, stealing food is automatically the right-hand structure. So what is that? Well, this is something, you know, I mean, this is a bad this is like a, an overall bad activity. Generally bad thing that the student does. So where is there another generally bad thing? Well, this is the other generally bad thing, cheat on exams. Copying other students' answers is a lesser priority. And it's, um, this is how the student does it. But the two things of equal priority here are cheats on exams and steals food. And so these are the two things that should be parallel. Because these two are equal priority. Like these are the main activities and that's a sub-activity. Like, the, 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 the structure here, if these are parallel, and the ones that are parallel here, like, you've got copying and stealing. If those are parallel, then we are saying that both of them are methods of cheating. Because if you, if you read these, this also, guys, this also works the other way around. Not only should parallel structures be parallel meanings, but if you put words in parallel, then you are giving them parallel meanings. So if you don't want to do that, that's a really, really bad thing to do. Like in this case, if you had, um, so steals is the next sentence, so we'll get there in a second. But um, if you said copying and stealing, then both of those have to be ways of cheating. You know, you're saying by doing this and doing that. So it's almost like processing it this way. So the point is that these shouldn't be parallel structures. The short version of all of this long-winded discussion is that the ones that are supposed to be parallel are these. Stealing and cheats, those are not parallel. These, which are parallel, create the, the impression that these are both ways of cheating on exams. Because they are put in parallel, we're saying they're the same meaning. So you got to use meaning here. I mean, in this case, this is exactly what we want to do. If you go back to if you go back to number one, grammar is the same. 
um, the the to the poster in the, in the text box, the correct version of the third one is the fourth one. So we're going to get there. This is exactly what we want to do here. Like these are parallel and these are supposed to be parallel. These are both ways of doing that. The student cheats on exams by doing this and doing that. Here, though, it's a lie. The student cheats on exams by doing this and doing that. No, wrong. Smiley face if you guys get the idea here. And again, you know, big smiley face. I know you can't make it any bigger, but big smiley face if you understand that mechanics here is not good enough. Very big deal. Okay, for a lot of you guys, this is going to mean a complete change in the way that you think about this exam. Because a lot of you guys are, are mechanics, 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 and, and you can't just be a mechanics only type. Okay, um, <laughs> big smiley, there you go. So the student now here, this one, again, same sort of deal. The student cheats on exams. Here's how the student cheats on exams. In this case, no idea is parallel to this. So that's fine, right? This is one method of cheating not parallel to anything else. So that's just a modifier. And then you're like, the student cheats in exams and steals food from the school cafeteria. So this is what we want. Um, this is one thing that people tend to be better at in spoken language than in written language. People tend to be very good at getting down to the ideas and the meaning. Um, that's, by the way, this is why parallelism exists. Because all of those things, you, when you talk, you don't need perfectly parallel structures for this sort of thing. Because it's, you have tone of voice and you have all this other kind of stuff. Um, so you don't have to bother, right? But we don't have tone of voice, and we don't have inflection, and we don't have any other stuff in written language, which is why we need to be so vehement about parallelism. So let's go ahead and look at problems. Smiley face, you guys are ready to move on to a problem. Problem. Let's do a problem. This one's from GMAT prep. Here's a GMAT prep problem. Right here. Okay, I'm going to put A through E again in your text box. And um, as for the previous problem, please do not um, indicate your answer in the text box. Please use the A through E buttons at the top left of the screen. I'll give you guys about a minute. And Okay, everybody, please try to answer this thing. Okay, uh, here are your, this is looking pretty good. Um, here's your polling results. There's still about three of you, um, three of you don't have answers yet. Um, that was about a minute and a half. And that's not even counting the time before I put the timer on the screen. I don't know how many of you looked at it. So that is, you got to try to be doing these in that much time or less. Um, it, it might just mean that you're looking, not, that you're not using a systematic enough method of splitting or eliminating and so on. But um, mining, so, okay, what ideas, all right, here's an and. If you have this as an and, all right, then that would mean parallel structures. 
whereas notice that 4 and 2 are not parallel structures. So don't go crazy here. All right, 4 and 2 are not parallel signals. So those are actually modifiers. So I mean, some people might have picked choice and they might have not picked CD and E. You got to make sure you know not only what is a parallel signal, but also what is not a parallel signal. So what else is parallel in this problem text box? Are there any other ideas that are parallel? if you guys know. Notice here's another signal, this green thing. Yeah, so we've also got generating electricity and heating. This is in all five, so let's go after this one first. And then we'll worry about that stuff if we even need to. Um, well, remember you gotta you, you gotta do these right to left because there's nothing on the um, there's no signal on the left hand structure. So with these ones, you've got to proceed right to left. Um, what? So this is a form of heat. Here's heating. Here's two heat. Here's two heat, here's four heating, and here's heat. Okay, now remember you got to use meaning here. A couple of you guys said electricity and heating. Um, what idea is parallel to heat or heating or whatever else, whatever, whatever, whatever other form of heat? So text box, what is the idea? that is parallel to heating. Well, these are the consequences of this production of energy, these two things, right? Heating is one consequence of the increased energy. And here's another consequence. It's, it's generating electricity. So another consequence. These ideas over here at the other side of the sentence are not parallel to heating. So we're not looking at them right now. Um, it's just generating electricity and heating home. So r right to left, this is heating. We, what do we need to, if this is heating, what has to be over here? Text box. This has got to be generating. So that, that doesn't work. This is not generating, so this is out. This is two heat. We need to generate, not to be generated. So that, that doesn't work. It's not wrong because it's passive voice, by the way, in case any of you guys out there are thinking that. There are plenty of contexts in which the passive voice is just fine. But the reason why this is actually incorrect is because the subject of this verb would have to be electricity. So you'd be saying electricity was being generated and electricity was heating at home. I mean, that, that's not what we're doing. This stuff is generating electricity and heating homes, not being generated and heating homes. So those are not the parallel ideas. Um, to heat and generating, uh-uh, for heating and for generating, yes, and heat would have to be generate, that's not generate, so we can eliminate actually everything but D, just based on the right-hand parallel structure. Any questions? Smiley face if that much makes sense. The, I mean, this is mechanical. I, I mean, okay, L like the deal is 
Yeah, I mean, you can't get rid of it because the whole idea of parallelism is a mechanical idea. But, but like, you know, yeah, evaluating parallelism is still a mechanical procedure. And it always will be. But um, you, you can't use the mechanical procedure un until you know where you are supposed to use it. And, and, and that's what meaning is all about, right? Because you just have no idea where you're supposed to use this thing. I mean, it, it, it's like this problem. You know, it, it's, I mean, this, this, these are all mechanical processes, but you don't know where to, to use them until you think about what we're trying to say here. So, um, it, it's like having a tool. You know, I mean, this whole notion of, of right to left and, and signal words and all this other stuff is wonderful, but un, until we know what is supposed to be parallel, you can't use it. It's kind of like having a nice new drill that we buy. Well, until we know where we're supposed to drill a hole, we can't start drilling holes. So, um, now let's talk about and. I, I like, I, I also picked this problem because it ties into this other problem. If you remember this, um, what we said, yeah, Rajat's got it perfectly over there. Um, if you connect two sentences or clauses with just and, then you're implying that the two ideas are, are relatively independent. So if you have this sentence, the problem is that mining and producing are not separate actions. So we actually don't want those. I mean, and producing are not separate actions of equal priority. So, um, Number one, we, we shouldn't connect them with and. And number two, they don't have to be parallel, and they and probably shouldn't. I mean, instead, the relationship here is that this is the purpose of doing that. Th those are not parallel notions. Like if one thing is the reason that you are doing one other thing, then those aren't parallel anymore. Those, those become something where you'd want to use a modifier to express this action. So, um, yeah, that, that's Rajat, very good. And um, lastly, don't forget, someone's asking whether enough for is a modifier. Um, it, it must be, because it's a correct answer. This problem is official. Like, if you ever see anything in an officially correct answer, then it's correct. End of story. Okay. Um, let's look at something else. Um, let's look at helping verbs. We only have about 13 minutes or so, so let's skip to this topic about helping verbs. We always have, for some reason, always way less time than I expected it to be. Okay. Um, let's, smiley face, if you guys are ready to move on. I don't see any questions being typed in the text box, so, um, Let's do it. Here's a problem. Uh, this is a little, it looks probably a little bit blurry on the screen. Um, this is from our, this is from our exam. This is from the uh, Manhattan Manhattan test. So, in case any of you are wondering about the source, that's from the MGMAT test. So go for it. I'm going to clear your answers. This is a really short sentence, so I'm going to give you something like 50 seconds.
Okay. Um. Yeah. The underline. You guys are correct. The underline. That's a good point. So I'll give you a little bit of extra time because the underline is wrong. Um, that's where the underline is supposed to be. So okay, I'll give you about twenty or thirty more seconds. Thank you. Good call. Okay, um, let's get an answer here, please. Okay. Um, three, two, one, go ahead and indicate something. If you don't have an answer, that's Vishal, Raja, Chitranga, Danielle. If you don't have answers, give me something. Okay, here are your statistics. Again, if you guys are not answering these things, you, you've got to answer these things. So here are the statistics. Most of you are picking D and E. So um, the other ones, I'll just give you the quick executive summary of how to eliminate them. Um, if you have, you can't say more with as, so this is wrong, and you can't say, um, termites does, because termites is plural. And then you also can't do the most with them. There are other things wrong with a couple of those, like, I mean, significant homes is also a problem. But that leaves us with the last two. So let's try this. Let's talk about these helping verbs situation. Well, we're going to come back to this in a second, this slide. We're going to decide that. How about this? I can run, I'm going to give you four sentences. Uh, try that one, that one, this one. And this one. Okay, let's do this with the green check red X method. So let me give you that. Here are those. Okay, give me a red X or a green check for just whether these are okay or not. First one, we should be able to do this pretty quickly, like maybe 10 seconds or something each. Um, I can run faster than my brother. Everybody um, shouldn't be taking this long to decide, guys. Um, pick, pick either you like that or you don't. Um, Remember, a big part of survival on this test is if you are deliberating, just pick something. One, one of the worst things you can do here is um, deliberate. So, I mean, deliberation will absolutely destroy you. So here's what you guys said about that one. Okay, what about the second one? I'll clear out your answers. What about the second one? Remember, 10 seconds tops, guys. Just pick something. Let me know if you think it's okay or not. Not the kind of thing we want to be staring at. Correct. Okay, here are the polling results there. A couple of you guys aren't answering these. Remember, the GMAT is a test where you have to answer everything. So you definitely want, into the, you want to get into the rhythm of answering everything that is thrown at you. Okay, what about the third one? OK. 
Okay. These are pretty good. Here's the statistics on that one. You guys didn't like that one. All right. And then what about the last one? Okay, everybody picks something. We still got a lot of no responses here. Okay. Um, this one is so far the, of the people who are answering. This one is is positively unanimous. That's good. All right. So now you again the crowd is right. Um, the crowd is correct about all of these again. So notice that either of these works, these two that are up here. Um, but in this case, the first one's not okay. Text box, does anybody know why the first one is not okay? And before you start typing, let me give you a hint. It's not a grammar issue, and it's not an idiom issue. So it's not anything to do with um, grammar or idiom. Remember, um, some of you guys are still typing things that are grammar and idiom. Some of you are still typing things that are like parallelism and, and, and stuff like that, or comparison. Um, may, comparison may be depending on what you mean by that. Yeah, it, it, this is an ambiguous meaning, right? This could mean uh, this could mean two things. This could mean I know more about Shakespeare than my brother knows about Shakespeare. That's one thing that it could mean. And the other thing that it could mean is I know more about Shakespeare than I know about my own brother. I, I, this could mean I, this could mean either of those things. I don't know. I have no idea which one it is. So therefore, it's ambiguous. There's nothing wrong with the grammar because the grammar is basically the same as it is upstairs. But two meanings. So this is one meaning. This is correct. This one's not ambiguous. There are not two things that this means. I mean, this this only means one thing. So this is not ambiguous, this is ambiguous. So the first question is, um, they're both correct. There's really no such thing as preferred in these kinds of things. I mean, this is, it's, either, it's either correct or it's incorrect. They're not going to make you choose between them. Um, so when do you need helping, when do you need the helping verbs? So I'll make a long story short because time is really starting to tick on us here. But when do I need helping verbs in the second half of a parallel construction? Well, the first time that I might need such helping verbs is, I mean, if they are required by two par parallel signals, such as like both and or either or, etc. That's not what happens here. What happens here is if I need that helping verb to resolve ambiguity i.e. to take a sentence with two possible meanings, or more than two, but that's going to be rare, and reduce to one meaning. So smiley face, if you guys understand this stuff on this page, why these are both fine, why these are not both fine. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is where does the helping verb go? So in this case, 
there are actually two, and then we'll come back. Well, we're we're going to come back to this problem in just a little bit. Um, so now we've figured out when do we need the helping verbs. We're not doing that today. Um, when do where rather do we put the helping verb? Okay. So now, remember, um, I know more about Shakespeare than my brother is Rob, who is a big uh, So now I'm going to give you six versions of this, seven versions of this, believe it or not. And you guys are going to tell me what you think. So we're going to make this kind of small. Um, okay, we're going to edit this. Uh, you're going to see some magic copying and pasting here. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, and then we're going to make this. Right now, those all look the same. Yes, they do. But we are going to make these seven different things, and then you guys are going to vote. Okay. This one we're going to put here. 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 This one, we're going to do this. Uh, let's do the magic copy and paste with that one. Be faster. Okay. And then we're going to correct these two to this one and this one. Okay, let's go through these. They're all the same sentence with different modifications, so let's see if we can bang through this. Red X, green check. Um, first one. First one we know is correct because we saw that already. I mean, we, I told you it was correct. So let's sorry, forget the first one. I mean, we know the first one's right. Second one, green check, red X. Second one. Okay. Um, I'm going to break the, well, no, I'll see what you guys answer to these. So you wrote, okay, here are your polling answers. We need to wait a little bit less time here. So but this one is what you guys said. You guys are split on this one. Okay. Um, third one, the one that's right here, what do you guys think? Okay, this one's pretty, um, you guys are all on the same side of the fence here. So you guys, all right, that's the result there. Next one. Okay, here's what you guys are saying. What you guys are saying is this. Okay, next one. That's that one. Fifth one. Cleared your answers. Fifth one.
Okay, let's vote on this, guys. Fifth one. Here are your statistics. You, okay. Next one. Um, okay, your answers are clear. Next one, sixth one. If your answer was cleared, please enter it again. Okay, a lot of you are still blank on this one. Give me an answer, please. We got to wrap up in a couple of minutes. All right, here is what you have on that one. And then um, the last one. Very last one. Green check, red hat. Okay, there's still a lot of blanks here. I mean, you guys need to give me some kind of vote. Uh, but, all right, here is what you had to say. Here's what you said. Okay, um, let me give you the verdict here. The verdict is that that, that one's correct. This one's correct. This one's correct. Right. Um, well, I got an X in my hand. So this one is definitely incorrect. This one is correct. This one is absolutely correct. And this one is, I'm going to use a minus sign for, it's not totally wrong, but it's considered awkward. So. Here's the rule. Okay, the first thing you got to realize, and we're going to make this quick here. The first thing you got to realize is that helping verbs can totally precede their subject. Okay, in parallel constructions, they do all the time. You got to make sure you know this construction. So, helping verbs can precede their subject. You just whether you like it or not, if you, if you're thinking spoken language, you're not going to like it. But give me a smiley face if you guys understand this. It's totally okay to write than does my brother. Okay, smiley faces. If you understand that, not if you like it, just if you get that it's okay. All right. Um, my highly educated brother, that doesn't change anything. So this is, these are both correct. So the deal is that adjectives placed before the noun, uh, adjectives or modifiers placed before the noun don't change anything about this. Same thing with that one. If does my brother is fine, then so is does my highly educated brother. It's just adjective. Now, here's where it gets hairy. All right? If you've got a following modifier, okay, first of all, you don't want to separate a noun from a noun modifier. You can't place a verb between a noun and a noun modifier. 
So this is not um, this is not a helping verb error. This is just you can never do this. If you've got something like a comma which or a comma who or any of the other mod noun modifiers that are in class six or that are in the strategy guide as noun modifiers, um, you, you can't put verbs here. You can't say my brother does comma who or, or which. Smiley face if you guys understand that. That's not that's just not something that you can do. Okay, so um, yeah, big smiling. Now here's the deal: when when the noun is followed by a modifier, you can move that polling out of the way. When the noun is followed by a modifier, you should place helping verbs before the noun and modifier. So, and it's considered awkward if you don't. Notice this is just helping verbs. Extremely, extremely, extremely important. Um, we're not talking about other verbs. Uh, helping verbs like, you know, can, will, does, do, um, could, etc. Not action verbs. You, you cannot put action verbs in front of nouns. So, for example, I could say I know more about Shakespeare than my brother knows. I could not write I know more about Shakespeare than knows my brother. That, that would not be okay. But well, that's not what this, this unit is about. This unit is about helping verbs like these, verbs that go in front of other verbs. So um, here it's considered awkward if you separate. Um, if the helping verb is separated from the noun, by a following modifier. That's considered awkward. So that's the problem with this one. And if it's a modifier that doesn't have commas, it's absolutely fatal. It's absolutely wrong. Now notice that again, notice the contrast. Notice that this is where you would put an action verb. If you had like knows, then you would have to put it here. But if it's a helping verb, you throw it in front. So let me use, I've been using purple for things that are correct, so let me keep doing that. Uh, there. And then. Any questions? Smiley face, if this stuff all makes sense. Smiley face, yes. You may not like it, but give me a smiley face if it makes sense to you. Okay, so here's the deal here. Um, in this case, do we need the helping verb? Yes, because D is ambiguous. Um, it, it could be termites do more damage to homes than they do to branches. In other words, the termites, or that's what say, or not on. Or it could also mean that termites do, do more damage to homes than branches do to homes. We don't know. So we need the helping bird. So that's enough. I mean, that's enough that you can get rid of D. But if you look at E, branches from trees is a noun plus a following modifier. So if you look at that, um, that's the kind of thing that you have to, have to, have to 
put your helping verb in front of. That's like my brother, comma, who had, um, who has never taken a class in British literature or whatever I wrote. So in E, the helping verb is placed before branches plus the modifier from trees as required. Then it's usually a helping verb. That's where it has to go. A choice that a choice saying then branches from trees do would be considered fatally awkward. Okay. Um, yeah, with awkwardness, they would probably also make it wrong in another way, too, just so there wouldn't be endless fights breaking out over it. Like, like there wouldn't, you're not really going to see things that are just awkward. Okay, we are 15 minutes over, and, and we've really got to kind of jam here. So let's, um, I mean, I'll, you know, if you guys have things in the text box super, super quick that I can answer in, like, 30 seconds, then we can try that. Otherwise, we gotta, we got to fly here. Um, okay, so we're going to stop the recording.